Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Kumar Subramaniam, and I'm part of the global investing team at HDFC Securities. Uh, in our series of uh, multiple webinars that we've been doing in terms of educating investors about investments in global markets, US markets, uh, we spoke about why invest in global markets in that same series. We spoke about specific assets like ETFs. We spoke about uh, uh, we spoke about multiple other things. And in that context, uh, today we are going to talk about a concept called as curated portfolios. Uh, I'll talk about what I'll give you an introduction as to what is a curated portfolio. Uh, we will talk about why one needs to build a curated portfolio. What are the elements to consider while building a curated portfolio? Uh, we'll quickly talk about some of the parameters that you need to keep in mind while evaluating a portfolio in terms of uh, your own investments. And I'll also quickly uh, talk about an upcoming feature on the global investing platform, which is which is uh, we will be uh, soon launching curated portfolios on the global investing platform. So once you see these portfolios, hopefully this webinar will help you assess these portfolios in terms of a fit to your own investment strategy. Uh, I'll start off with the basic introduction. Uh, most of you are already investors in the stock market. You uh, you're either invested through single assets or multiple assets in the stock market. Uh, so curated portfolio is nothing but a selection of investments built for a specific purpose or for a specific investor. Uh, typically, the common assets that you would see in a curated portfolio, including uh, if you look at uh, historically what sort of assets were used, they were mostly financial assets. So you would have stocks in a portfolio, you would have some sort of bonds, you would have mutual funds, ETFs, currencies. These are all financial assets. Uh, off late, there are a lot of alternate assets also that one includes in a curated portfolio, things like real estate, art, and multiple such alternate assets. Uh, all of this building of a curated portfolio in terms of selecting these investments, it ties back to two general investment uh, theories. And I think it's sort of important to touch upon these two theories. We'll not get too theoretical about them. I'll just touch upon these two. The, uh, the two theories are one is called as a capital asset pricing model or CAPM in terms of how one derives the expected rate of return on a given investment because these investments, you have a historical performance of these investments. So CAPM or capital asset pricing model model talks to you about how do you measure the expected return from this asset and there is a second theory called as modern portfolio theory which helps you which was built as long ago as 1952 obviously there have been iterations and improvements on top of it but this theory talks about how do you uh, use this uh, expected returns and how do you build a portfolio for optimizing expected returns given an expected risk that you have in mind so there are concepts like efficient frontier where you have multiple portfolios that satisfy a given expected risk condition and things like that but whenever you're assessing portfolios just remember these two things one is a pricing model which talks about what is the expected return from a port, uh, from one investment in that portfolio the second is a portfolio theory itself which talks about how do you combine these assets given a risk target that you have uh, so obviously the elements that you would consider while building any portfolio there are three elements at a very high level that one needs to consider while building a portfolio uh, one i've already spoken about which is risk tolerance you need to know what is the purpose that you're building this portfolio for and your own stage in terms of your investment goal in terms of where you are in terms in terms of those investment goal and this will help you decide your risk tolerance as well as the second parameter which is time horizon that is over what period of time do you want to build out your portfolio and you could have uh, multiple portfolios where some of your portfolios are focused more from a short term to mid term perspective some of your portfolios are focused more on a long term perspective the third most important element is diversification and that is one of the building grounds of any portfolio which is that uh, uh, we all know how to pick and choose single stocks to invest in but what a portfolio of stocks offers is diversification and we'll sort of uh, talk about some parameters also later in the presentation on how do you measure these uh, uh, measure these various things like diversification uh, so moving on what sorts of curated portfolios typically talk about we've seen that historically there are three types of curated portfolios that anyone would talk about the first as i have mentioned is more risk-based 
So there are at a very high level three categories. You're categorized as either a conservative investor, you're categorized as a moderate risk investor, or you're categorized as an aggressive investor. And based on these, you're offered different portfolios depending on your risk profile. This is the most traditional way of building a portfolio. Now, there are a lot of robo advisory platforms that you would have heard of where uh, this whole process is not just automated, but there is a level of intelligence in terms of understanding and assessing your risk profile that's built into these robo advisory platforms and that's the next level of the same risk profile based the second commonly built curated portfolio is something called as theme based portfolios these are portfolios for example I'll talk about a portfolio on the global investing platform called electric mobility now this is a theme based portfolio where you pick and choose multiple companies across a concept like electric mobility so you will touch upon multiple sectors again because you will pick companies from across the value chain it is not just electric car manufacturers but it is uh, raw material suppliers to these car manufacturers battery technology suppliers people who are uh, building batteries and those sort of things uh, that will uh, that will come into play so it's, that is what is called as a theme based curated portfolio the third uh, curate type of curated portfolio is typically called as a fund manager or an investment guru based uh, strategy or portfolio where typically you are either following uh, the exact replica of a fund manager strategy or you're just applying that strategy in terms of the metrics that you need to look at and building your own portfolio. So you could either just be following the approach or you could be following the exact portfolio that that fund manager has and that is the third uh, typical type of curated portfolio that's there. So uh, the obvious question that one asks is why invest in a curated portfolio at all? I think the uh, key to any curated portfolio is diversification. When you invest in a single stock, uh, you're basically exposed to a single point of failure. If that stock does well, you do well. If the stock goes down, your entire investment is gone down. One step ahead is something called as investing in an index. Index is a combination of stocks and this is where a portfolio needs to be differentiated from an index if you look at any stock index for example whether it is in the context of sensex in india or in the context of uh, the s p 500 in the us these index were typically built to for uh, just for convenience of measurement they were never typically built for investment itself like if i had to track at a very high level how the market is doing i would use the index as a representative of that uh, whereas now etfs of late have started replicating these index even as a trading instrument or an investment uh, instrument but keep in mind that these stocks indices were typically built for measurement they were not built for investment and that is where your portfolios come in again indices are, are typically multi-asset but you will find them to be a single asset class for example uh, equity index will only cover stocks it will cover a universe of stocks so it's called multi-asset but it's a single asset class a portfolio takes this one step forward where it is not just multi-asset but there's multi-asset class as well which means that i could have fixed income i could have equity i could have gold i could have currencies commodities all of that into a single portfolio uh, now I'll talk about some of the parameters that we typically use to measure a curated portfolio. Again, uh, there are different types of uh, curated portfolios. Now one variant of a portfolio that has been popular in, I would say in the last uh, five to 10 years of investment is algo based portfolios where the trading signals are generated by algorithms rather than by any conventional uh, investment wisdom that's there and uh, which is why when these algorithms are generating the trading trading signal it's all the more important to pick and choose what sort of parameters you use to evaluate these portfolios so typically i'll talk about three things i'll talk about what sort of measures are needed to measure the performance of a portfolio i'll also talk about some ratios that are typically used in terms of how we measure the performance of the portfolio and we'll also talk about other metrics as to how you could use the other metrics to measure the performance of a portfolio so there are typically two very high level measures uh, that one uses one is called as alpha and the other is called as beta Alpha is nothing but the excess gains or the risk-free returns that a portfolio is able to generate, which means that if I put it in a risk-free, and today there are various definitions of risk-free, but think of a government bond or a government uh, fixed deposit as a risk-free asset. So if I were to build a portfolio, what is the excess gains that I have been able to generate over this risk-free asset? That is typically a measure of alpha. And uh, 
uh, then there is also a question of whether I have taken proportionate risk in order to do this or disproportionate risk. I can take a lot of risk and not be able to generate sufficient excess returns. A good measure of that is something called as beta. Now, beta can be measured both for an individual stock as well as something called as a beta coefficient. So in very simple statistical terms, what you do is you measure the uh, covariance of that particular. So think of the returns as a time series. You measure the covariance of that particular uh, stocks returns against the market returns. Divide that by the variance of the market returns and that will tell you what sort of excess uh, risk this particular uh, portfolio has taken and that will give you the beta coefficient of this portfolio. So beta coefficient can take upon any value, but you will typically see them hover around plus one minus one given or take a few points here and there. Basically a score of plus one means that it is strongly correlated with the market, which means the portfolio will perform exactly similarly to the market. A uh, score of exactly minus one means that it exactly inversely correlated with the market. And the score in excess of plus one means that that will tell you the volatility, the excess volatility that the portfolio has compared to the market. So you want to look at portfolios which are less volatile than the market and still be able to generate excess returns over the market. Now there are different uh, ratios that have been derived based on these sort of uh, measures that are there. Uh, simple ratios like a sharp ratio is one of the most commonly used. For example, sharp just measures the portfolio returns minus the risk free returns divides it by the standard deviation. Now there are other measures where the risk instead of standard deviation of the time series you use something called as a beta of the time series like I described and there are there's one more ratio which is called as a Sortino ratio which is just a variant of the sharp ratio. Now sharp considers all standard deviation to be bad but as investors we know that we like positive standard deviation but we dislike negative standard deviation which means that we like huge up days in the market but we dislike huge down days in the market. So Sortino ratio takes that into account and gives more weightage for a portfolio which has a tendency to generate more up days than down days. Uh, there are other metrics for example again Typically what people do is the risk is the returns is something that everyone advertises which means anyone who's building a portfolio will first talk to you about returns that they're able to generate through this portfolio. Whereas one of the things as an investor in the portfolio that you should keep in mind is what is the risk that I'm going through in order to build this portfolio. So one other metric typically which is useful for small to mid sized investors is something called as a max drawdown. So if you were to draw the portfolio returns as a time series in terms of a graph, the max drawdown explains to you what is the maximum distance between the peak that the graph went through and the lowest point that the graph went through. Essentially what it's telling you is how big a negative uh, return will you have to take, expected return will you have to take from this portfolio. Now it's very important as a measure not just how deep this is but when it occurs and also how long does it take to recover from this for two reasons we all have limited access to capital which means that we don't have the ability to sit through large losses so whenever you're evaluating a portfolio not just look at how deep was the max drawdown but how quickly did it recover from it and when did it happen for example if it happens very early in the life of the investment then that is not a good thing because you don't have sufficient capital to pull back from a drawdown Whereas if it happens much later in the investment cycle, it may still be okay because you've already built on certain returns and then you have enough capital to be able to pull back from this. Uh, so coming to coming beyond these uh, metrics that we use to measure risk and returns for the portfolio, I'm going to talk about some curated portfolios that we are specifically offering on the global investing platform. We'll be going live with these curated portfolios on the platform in uh, one to two weeks from now but again we followed the same approach which means that we will have a mix of risk based portfolios we will have conservative moderate today as you're familiar global investing platform already allows you to invest directly in stocks and etfs so some of us have already gone ahead and built these portfolios by doing individual stock picking what our curated portfolio product will do is it will offer you a single click solution where on a single click your uh, dollar allocation will get allocated across the different assets which are there in a given portfolio. Now I'll come to the three different type of portfolios that we're going to propose. Again, the first one is a risk based portfolio. So you, we will have a conservative portfolio, a moderate risk portfolio and an aggressive uh, portfolio for different uh, types of investors. 
there is something called as theme based portfolios that we are building i already spoke about electric mobility as a theme the second theme that we are working on is iot or internet of things and these are themes where you will find a lot of companies working at the cutting edge in markets like us market so it allows you to build themes not just around specific sector but across sector across the value chain of uh, some of these themes that are there the third then third one that we will be offering is guru based or investment guru based portfolios where uh, you know you take a warren buffet or a peter lynch who are big believers in value investing so we will have some value investing based portfolios that they have suggested uh, we have uh, famous indian uh, investors like uh, mr mohan ram who has built a uh, portfolio just based on the price uh, price to book ratio of uh, a specific type of companies that are there we will have his portfolios on the platform so we will have a lot of investment guru based portfolios on the platform as well so yeah i think uh, i pretty much i wanted it to be a short session and probably be more interactive because uh, the theory of portfolio building is fairly common and fairly easy to understand but i'd be happy to take uh, more questions as you have around these curated portfolios or any other part of the stock pick platform yeah stole that i'll be sent to questions on my messages so i'm going to quickly look and see if i can see these questions Okay, so I have the first question here. Is there a minimum amount that has to be invested in curated portfolio? Yes, there will be a minimum amount which will vary by portfolio to portfolio. For example, if you take a portfolio that is built only from five six stocks, then the minimum amount will not be very large. You could start as low as let's say a thousand dollars or thousand five hundred dollars to invest in these portfolios. Whereas if you some of your algorithm based trading signals, if you look at portfolios that they build, because it's an algorithm working in the back end, they can do a very easy selection allocation mechanism for even a universe of 500 stocks so what happens in that case is for you to have any meaningful allocation across these 500 stocks you need at least 5000 to 10000 dollars so depending on the type of portfolio there will be different types of portfolios on the platform where you can start from low ticket sizes like 500 dollars 1000 dollars and then you can expand on this the second question i think is sort of related it asks what is uh, what is ideal amount to start with as i explained it will vary from portfolio to portfolio so depending on the type of portfolio even our platform would suggest you a minimum investment amount that is needed to invest in these portfolios the i think the third question is uh, more related to the global investing product rather than to curated portfolios it says i have hdfc security and dmat account what is global investment platform um, so essentially like i said global investment platform is a product launched by hdfc securities for indian investors to invest in us markets you have access to over 3500 stocks and etfs that are available in the us markets in exchanges like nasdaq and nyse uh, hdfc has partnered with a broker partner in the us they've partnered with a custodian which is city bank in the us and hence they are offering this solution for indian investors where digitally you can create an investment account for investing in the us the entire process is digital like i explained you can create your account digitally it gets approved within a cycle of 24 to 48 hours by the us broker then you can digitally transfer funds from your bank account in india to your brokerage account in the us and you can make investments in real time you can monitor your portfolio in real time and you can also withdraw those funds as and when you need back that is that in essence is the global investing platform that it gives you offers okay there is a question saying can nris invest in all curated portfolios uh, yes nris uh, uh, nris can invest in the global investment platform as such and within global investing platform nris can go and invest in these curated portfolios as well like i mentioned we will be soon launching these curated portfolios in a span of 1 to 2 weeks we've already identified what portfolios we want to go live with uh, we have these portfolios getting built onto the platform so once that is available on a single single click whether you are a resident indian or a non resident indian you should be able to invest in these portfolios okay 
any example for portfolio stocks uh, i would wait till uh, so let me give you an example of a theme based right like electric mobility so obviously i will not just look at the one name that all of us are familiar with anyone who's heard about this company is tesla which makes electric cars right but tesla alone doesn't form uh, tesla is not the only one who's benefiting from this whole theme of electric mobility so we've identified a set of 10 companies tesla being one of them where these are companies either working on battery technologies these are company working on drive drive chain technologies that are specific to electric mobility so across the value chain you will find multiple companies and uh, such companies will be part of the portfolio so as you view these portfolios on the platform you will be able to see the names of the companies as well where can i find these details as i said we will be launching the curated portfolios uh, in a week to two weeks and once that is available on the platform you can see the portfolio you can invest in portfolio you can track the returns of the portfolio and the individual stock within that is this restricted to overseas investing or covers uh, indian bourses too this is restricted the set of curated portfolios that will be available on the global investing platform is restricted to us markets so this will be built out of security stocks and etfs that are available in the us markets okay so there is one more question it says what's the cost range for using your platform uh i so there are three different pricing plans available on the global investing platform just to repeat it there is a basic account that's available which has a one time account opening fee of 500 rupees and there is a per trade commission of 6.99 cents uh, there is a silver plan available which is a annual subscription plan where the uh, commissions are much lower and you get uh, additional features as well so the silver plan the annual subscription is 3999 and uh your trading commissions are $2 per trade uh, there is a gold plan as well where the uh, annual subscription is 13999 that is 13999 and your trading commissions are as low as 1 cent per share uh, so these are the three pricing plans that are available please do go through the global investing platform you will not just see the pricing plans in terms of uh, commissions but you will also see what are the benefits in an annual subscription plan you get a lot many more benefits than a basic plan so please go through that on the website uh yeah i think uh, we pretty much covered that i think there is a question around tax implication as well uh, so in terms of tax implication uh, just like investment in stocks and etfs in the us market there are two types of taxes there is a dividend tax and there is a capital gains tax dividends are tax deducted at source which means that let's say you are expected to get a 100 dollar dividend uh, the company will pay out a 75 dollar dividend into your account and 25 dollars is deducted as uh, tax you get a acknowledgement slip from the us uh, uh, irs which will tell you that they have deducted uh, 25 dollars of tax and you can offset that against your dividend tax liability in india in terms of capital gains you are not taxed in the us you are taxed only in india so depending on how long you have held the uh, held the specific investment for you are subject to either short term capital gain or long term capital gain in india the cut off period is 24 months anything le held less than 24 months is considered as uh, short term capital gain anything held more is considered as long term capital gain Okay thank you everyone for your time uh, i hope this was useful and uh, look forward uh, to having you invest in the curated portfolios on our platform when we